and talk about the slope of a line. On a line, the ratio of the rise over run for any two points comes out to be the same. To see what I mean by that, let's calculate the slope in several ways for this line that's shown below. The line is increasing with an x-intercept of negative 4 and a y-intercept of 2. I'm going to choose sets of points and then calculate the rise over run for those sets of points. So let's start with the points negative 4 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 1. We make what's called a slope triangle between these two points, which is a vertical and horizontal line that forms a right triangle with the line, and then calculate from one point to the other the rise and the run. The rise is the vertical movement up on the triangle, in this case one unit up, and the run is two units, one unit, two units, to the right, so that's a run of plus two. So the rise over run for this little triangle is one over two, or one half. Let's make another triangle. For this one, we'll use the point negative two, one, and we'll use the point two comma three. We'll make our slope triangle, that right triangle that connects the points and uses the line as the hypotenuse. And again, we'll calculate the rise and the run. If we go from the first point to the second point, from left to right, we would be rising two units and running one, two, three, four units to the right. So in this case, the rise over the run is two fourths, which is also one half if we reduce it. We'll go through and do one more. This time, let's use the point two, three and the point eight, six. I'm going to draw this right triangle below the line just to show you that it works out either way. And in this case, I'm also going to go from right to left instead, again, just to show you it works either way. So I'm going to start with the point 8, 6 and do the rise first. And so the rise is actually going down. So down 1, 2, 3 units. So that would be a rise of negative 3. And then for the run, I'm actually running from the point 8, 3 backwards to the point 2, 3. So that's 1 unit, 2 unit, 3 four, five, six units to the left, so that's a minus six. And when we calculate the rise over run, we can see that it's negative three over negative six, or one half. You can see that no matter how we do the calculation of rise over run, we end up with the same one half. Whether we do it from left to right, whether we do it from right to left, whether the slope triangle is under the line or above the line, it comes out the same. In fact, we can define the slope as the ratio of the vertical change in the graph, that's the rise, and the horizontal change in the graph between any two points. In essence, the slope is a measure of the steepness of a line. And if that line is increasing, the slope is positive, and if the line is decreasing, the slope is negative. In the US, we usually use the letter M to designate slope, but do make a mental note that other countries and other disciplines may use a different letter. To calculate the slope, we're just going to use the change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal. That's delta vertical over delta horizontal, or the rise over run, or the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. Or if we have y and x in our problem, it'll be delta y over delta x. Now delta just means change in. So consider for a second that if we had two points, x1 comma y1, and x2 comma y2, we would just be subtracting the y values, y2 minus y1, that goes in the numerator, and subtracting the x values, that's x2 minus x1, that goes in the denominator. So it really is just a difference in y values over a difference in x values. Since we now know that the slope is going to be the same no matter where we do the calculation on the graph, we can actually just find the slope of a line by making a slope triangle anywhere and counting that vertical and horizontal change. The next graph on the screen is a decreasing line with a y-intercept of 0, 4. It looks like it passes nicely through the point 4, 1. Let's go ahead and use those two points to find the slope of this line. I'm going to grab my ruler and make a slope triangle. In this case, I'm making it above the triangle for no reason other than arbitrary choice. 
moving from left to right, I would first travel the run. So that's one, two, three, four units in the positive direction to the right. And then the rise is actually going down. So that's one, two, three units. And since we went down, that's a negative three. The slope here is going to be the rise over run, or if you'd like to think of it this way, the change in the y values over the change in the x values change in the y values was negative 3, the change in the x values was 4. So the slope is negative 3 fourths. The slope should be negative if the line is decreasing, and it is. Now another way we can find the slope of this line would be to just write down the two points and then calculate the slope directly from those coordinates. So we said that the y-intercept was 0 comma 4, and another quote nice point that is one we can tell pretty obviously is 4, 1. I always like to write those vertical to each other, so 0, 4 above the point 4, 1, so that you can easily see the y values lined up and the x values lined up. If we were to label this, this first point would be x1, y1, and the second point would be x2, y2. So when we calculate our change in y over change in x, we're doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now that's just a really fancy way of saying subtract the y values and subtract the x values. If I subtract the y values, I'd be doing 1 minus 4. If I subtract the x values, just make sure that you go in the same direction with your subtraction. That would be 4 minus 0. 1 minus 4 gives us negative 3 and 4 minus 0 gives us 4. So you see the slope comes out the same way. Now I'd like for you to try the next four problems. We have two graphs that you need to find the slope for and two sets of points that you need to find the slope for. When you've given all four of those a try, then come back and see how you've done. For the line f of x, this is an increasing line with a y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 3. And it looks like we have another nice point at 1, comma, negative 1, or 2, comma, 1, or 3, comma, 3. All of those look like they fall very nicely on the crosshairs of our grid. So picking any two of those points, I'm going to go ahead and just use a slope triangle for this. So using the point 2, 1, and 3, 3, I'm going to draw a slope triangle below the curve, and then calculating my rise and run, I'm going to start at the rightmost point, and the rise is negative 2, and the run is negative 1. So my slope is going to be my change in y over change in x, which is negative 2 over negative 1, or positive 2, and you can see the graph does increase. The second graph, h of t, has a y-intercept of 5. It's decreasing, and it looks like the next nice point on the graph is 5, 2. So I'm going to mark out 5, 2 and 0, 5. Draw a slope triangle for those. I'm going to draw it above the curve. Again, arbitrary choice. It'll work either way, above or below. And going from the left point to the right point, I have a run. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right. And then I have a rise of 3 units, 1, 2, 3, down. So that's a negative 3. So the slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. And that's going to be negative 3 over positive 5. Make sure you put them in the right places. Just because we did the run first doesn't mean the run goes on top. It still goes in the denominator. So we have a slope here of negative 3 fifths. Okay, now we'll look at... The line that passes through 3, comma, negative 2 and 1, comma, 6. Again, I'm going to rewrite those points so that they appear vertically to each other. 3, comma, negative 2 above the point 1, comma, 6. For the slope, I'm going to do the change in y's over the change in x's. The change in y's is just going to be that 6 minus negative 2. And the change in x's is going to be 1 minus 3. Again, whatever direction you subtract in, make sure you do it the same way for the y's and the x's. Now 6 minus negative 2 is the same as 6 plus 2, so that's 8. And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So we have 8 divided by negative 2, which comes out to be a slope of negative 4. 
In the next example, again, I'm going to write the points so that they sit vertically on top of each other. 5 comma negative 3 above 7 comma negative 3. We're going to calculate the change in y over the change in x, delta y over delta x. And when I subtract the y values, I'm going to have negative 3 minus negative 3 over 7 minus 5. So change in the y's over change in the x's. On the numerator, negative 3 minus negative 3 is the same thing as negative 3 plus 3. So that's 0. And the denominator, 7 minus 5, is 2. Now 0 divided by 2 is 0. So this has a slope of 0. Now if we were to graph those two points, we'll see that the y coordinates are actually the same. If we were to draw a line through these points, this would be a horizontal line. So what does it mean when a line has zero slope? It means that the line is horizontal. This is like an edge case of lines. The other edge case of lines, might be fairly predictable, is what happens if the line is vertical. Now a vertical line has such a steep slope that it has basically become infinite. And because of that, we say the slope is undefined. Infinity is not a number. So if we have a line with an undefined slope, that would be if it comes out to be some number over zero, that's undefined, and this is a vertical line. Let's look at a line that has a slope of one half that passes through negative two comma one. The first thing we're gonna do is just plot the point we know. So we'll plot negative two comma one. Now we have a slope of one half, and remember that that's the rise over the run, which means that we'll rise one and run two from this point we've already graphed. So let's go ahead and rise one unit and run two units as if we were creating a slope triangle. We can actually repeat that process to get a couple points. Rise one, run two. We now have points at negative two, one, at zero comma two, and at two comma three. Now we should be able to go ahead and graph a line between those points. We can see it's an increasing line, which is as expected because it has a positive slope. There's one more graph to do. This line has a slope of negative three and it passes through the point one comma zero. So why don't you pause this video, give it a try, and then come back and see if you're right. All right, let's start by graphing the point one comma zero. And then from that point, we're going to use the slope, which is negative three. From that point, we're going to use the slope, which is negative three. That means the rise over run is negative three. And you might think, well, well, how do I split up the rise and run when I only have one number there? Remember, we can always make something a fraction by putting it over one. So we'll have a rise of negative three and a run of one. So starting at the point one comma zero, we're going to rise negative three. That means we're going down three and then we're gonna to run to the right one unit. That gives us a point at two comma negative three. We can repeat that, and that gives us another point. I thought I'd just make a note for you that negative three over one is actually the same thing as positive three over negative one. So we could go back to that original point at one zero, and instead rise three up one, two, three, and then go to the left one unit. And that should also give us a point on the line. And you can see all of those points line up nicely to make a decreasing line with a y-intercept of 0, 0,3 and a slope of negative 3.